while he's bringing that up, I'll just uh, start to introduce myself. Uh, I'm a livestock and crop producer from Wabasso, Minnesota. I've been raising pigs um, for, uh, since 1966, and I'm currently raising pigs for Nyman Ranch. And besides uh, uh, raising livestock, having a diversified crop and livestock farm, I also work for an organization called the Land Stewardship Project, work on federal and state policy. And I was stirred to Nyman Ranch when hog prices fell down to $9 a hundred back in uh, 1998. And uh, then I started to make a change in my operation because mainly I had a confinement operation. And uh, the, what I'm going to be talking about here is the last project I did on my farm in terms of converting uh, uh, a building I built in 1977 called a, uh, I called it a nursery growing unit for pigs. And uh, so what I was looking at was looking at uh, how could I take this asset that sat there for about 10 years was my most expensive investment that I made back in 1976 and make use of it and turn it from being something that I really didn't like working with to something that could, could work for my operation and work within the Nyman Ranch protocol of raising pigs without antibiotics in a deep straw system. And that's kind of what this is about. So, just the ear, the going side, side, side. Oh, on here? Yep. So, sideways will kick it forward? Yep. So, that's just a little bit about my background diversified operation. Do rotational grazing with, with cows, too. And uh, that background, I'm just in the fifth year of a CSP contract and did fencing. Just some more background about myself. And uh, this is OK, too, if, it, if it's all right with you. I don't mind kneeling. Better for my back. Um, so, um, this, so this basically was converting this 24 by 64 building to meet Nyman Ranch standards for improved animal welfare while using um, existing resources. And the idea was to, to demonstrate that this building could be animal welfare friendly and uh, pigs could be raised in a healthy environment. So I renovated this building that had a partial pit, about half, it had two rooms that were, one was 24 by 34 and one was 24 by 36. And uh, I renovated it and, and we looked at, in terms of evaluation, uh, how this building would work. We looked at pig performance, pig flow. Uh, we looked at designing the building so it'd be easy for clean out. Uh, looked at it for, we wanted to get better air quality. Uh, before when I used this building just as a strictly confinement building, every time you walked in the house my wife didn't like it very much. Uh, because you carry that odor with you. Um, and we also wanted to have a more pleasant atmosphere to work in. Building didn't have any windows. And also have a space designed to address, you know, sick or injured pigs. Uh, and and I said the older piece. So this is kind of the outside just showing as we started working on it. One of the pieces to take away the dudgeon effect, which is present in one of the buildings, they don't have, a lot of hog buildings don't have windows. So we installed windows to bring in some natural light. And this is the front side of that hog building. You can see uh, off to your right uh, the old pit fan. You can see we installed a doorway there. That, could, that a skid loader could get through. And then we put a pad in front so that when we back out of the skid loader with, a, with manure, we can just turn, dump into a spreader. And this is just showing us building the bulk bins and installing them. And then we're going to go to the inside. So now you, we're going to have some pictures contrasting what we were dealing with. And of course, this was after, this was, uh, uh, the last one the pigs were in there. So as you can see it looks a little bit dirty, a little cobwebs, and you can see the uh, the slats in this particular building were down, in this room were down the middle of the building. Um, this is the construction of a dividing wall between the east and west rooms with a door. So before on the left hand side where that big door is now I just had a small walk door. This is kind of showing in process as we were doing things. Uh, we, in this particular room, we capped two-thirds of the slats. 
And so before it was half slats. By capping two thirds of the slats, uh, we improved the air quality significantly. Um, and you'll see in here, uh, we capped with uh, two inches of cement. Uh, we didn't come up exactly to do this all by ourselves. We consulted, we, we had, a, had an idea about what to do, but we uh, with, worked with Wayne Martin from the University of Minnesota, uh, who works with alternative uh, livestock program at the university, and, and, and then in turn worked with Larry Jacobs, an engineer at the University of Minnesota. So in one of the rooms, this particular room, we had to figure out how could we put our feeders there and watering there and not put too much pressure on them slats, you know, so they wouldn't fall through and break through. So, and there was just a two inch cap of cement we used on, on that theory. Uh, this shows that as we did this, as we poured cement, we used insulation board, uh, that, so that would kind of protect from the uh, pit uh, and also for warmth. And we also, at that time, you can take a building that's older, if you're gonna renovate it, insulation's a big deal. So we re-insulated the ceiling too. Um, and this side here shows uh, what we did in terms of water drainage. So we kept some partial slats, as you can see to your right. And this area, uh, the area on the left-hand slide, right on, on the front of that, is an area where we're, where we're gonna have straw, and you'll see it a little bit better in the picture. We have a little bit of a hole through there, but we also have a divider wall. So that little bit of, that real small hole, like a little tile, is just designed to pull the water off the straw area, so if there is some manure or leakage, you know, um, uh, urine, that that would slip through through the slatted area. And that part there is the first of the divider wall. It's, just, it's a short divider wall, designed by going along with the skid loader, that I don't break, break the wall above it. And this just shows some of the cement work we were doing in, the, in, the, in this particular room on the east side. Um, so this shows in, in January 2014 when we put pigs into this particular room. You can see where the feeders are and a partial slat. You'll particularly note to the right, you see the watering system, just a small slatted area. So when they drink water, it, uh, the manure will, will fall through and the water seepage will fall through into the pit. Um, and this shows the, op the opposite side of, of that particular room, the strawed area. We'll see, you see we brought, uh, I bought used gates from a neighbor and installed them. And uh, so that's the strawed area. And you'll see right in front, uh, Let's see, got to get my directions, but on the, on the far back wall, you'll see a raised cement area. And the purpose of that raised cement area, keep the straw out of the pit. So they come in there, they sleep, they play around with the straw. Uh, we generally stick a bale in at night and, uh, and a bale in the morning. And they'll, they'll manure a little in there for the system work. It's not bad if they do a little bit. And we, do, and we cover that area up and they spread it around. They want something to do. Just shows that area again. Just another picture. And this here, uh, we, had a, we had a feeding system with an auger system before, and so we just modified that system. Um, before, where you, where you see that sliding door there, we used to have our bulk bins out there, but that's now our loading area from getting in, so we had them move our bulk bids and modify our feeding system. And, and we pretty much used existing materials, some of the line from a neighbor and some of my old feeding line. And here, uh, I'm just making a notation about where I placed the heater. And maybe most people know this better than I did or at least didn't think of it at the time, but here the heater's placed in the right direction, far away, pointed towards the strawed area. That means that's where the most warmth is gonna be. So now we're going to the west side of that particular building. Remember I said there was two rooms. One was 24 by 34 and one's 24 by 36. So now we're going to the west side. And you're seeing different things for different rooms because the pit, the pit in, the, in, the, in this room we're gonna look at next uh, had the, the pit down the middle. The slats were down the middle. And the one we just got done with, they were on the north side of the building on one end. So we had to have a different plan for each room and still get in there with a skid loader and carry it out. So 
Now we're looking uh, at this room when, when the project began. You can see the pit down the middle. And here's where it shows construction on this uh, west side. And it, uh, you'll, you'll see the pitted area that we left, just a very small area that's left there, probably about eight feet by well, maybe 12 feet or so, I would say. And then we have those riser steps and the front part of the riser steps, again, its idea is to keep the straw back. And in this case, we had quite a, quite a drop down, so that's why you're seeing two steps. This just shows some of the construction work we went through to build that area. And uh, I think I'll just jump on here. This here uh, shows uh, on the west side of that area, uh, it would be about half the room is what we call the sleeping area for the pigs. This is where we, where, uh, we had to get, get through the idea to, uh, the simpler thing would have been take a pitchfork and just pitch the manure and put a low, uh, just a sh shallow part of slat. But I didn't want to do a pitchfork because my back isn't that great. I wanted to use the skid loader. So uh, this here we covered that, that uh, pit that was going down the middle. Uh, with recommendation from Larry Jacobs at the University of Minnesota. I think we had re-rods going every six, every six inches going across that slatted area and crossed. And uh, so it was really reinforced so it could carry a skid loader so you wouldn't have to worry about that. Again, another picture. And you're, you're seeing this as it's going. It'll, it'll look a little bit better later. And then here, I'm just going to say in this particular room when we placed the heater, you see I put it right in that straw area, wrong area. Should be another end. And just another picture of this, this hall piece here. And this, this gives you another picture of, of the uh, going out of the slatted area where the feeders are, going up to the area where straw would be put down. And you'll see that plastic pipe in there. The reason that plastic pipe is in there is so the, so the pigs don't abrase their feet going up back and forth. You know, you, uh, for those of you who work with pigs, you go back and forth in the building and pigs move just like that. The idea is so they don't injure their feet. And this shows construction that we put into what I call raising on this left-hand side, this, this picture right here, under January 2014, shows the slatted, small slatted area, and this is one side of making what I call a sick pin area. We have three pins there, and so that's just, just one picture of, of how we sort of built that. You will see I had wood forms up, but built by walls, and used existing slats out of a different building that I saved to put over that. Uh, the idea of kept catching water seepage. Again, uh, just doing some of the work cleaning up and painting and uh, just kind of a piece going along as we worked on it. And um, so in the picture on the right, you see part of the, again, uh, gating that we got from a neighbor. And you see the door going into the other room. And this is a strawed area with, with pigs in there. Now you can kind of see the total pretty much the total piece as it relates to this west room where pigs are going in both areas. Again, another, another picture of that. And this is the slatted area where they're eating feed out of those feeders. And, the, and see, we got the waters uh, placed between, uh, between both sides there. Water, with pigs, water is the trick. Most of the time, where you want the manure. So, um, so anyway, I'm just going to list off a few of the points here. So, I wanted to use the pit in both rooms, but didn't want to, the straw to end up in the pits. Accomplish that with fencing and raise access pads to keep the straw out of the pit. Wanted the major dunging to occur in the slatted areas. Accomplish that by water placement in the slatted areas kept. Wanted good air quality, accomplish that by capping two-thirds of the slats and good variable speed pit fans. 
Wanted a pleasant atmosphere to work in, accomplish that by putting windows in and painting. Wanted easy clean out, accomplish that by making skid loader access for dry manure. Wanted a treatment area for sick or injured pigs, accomplish that by special small pin, pin designed for that. Uh, results now, now as a straw-based animal welfare unit, two feed trials showed improved pig performance in the building using 40% less feed per pound of gain compared to pigs in this weight category fed outside. Easy to clean because the pigs can be gated into feeded areas during the clean out. So the area where they were eating and drinking, easy to just move them quick just like that. I mean you can move them in three minutes into the pen area open the door up, clean with the skid loader. Air quality of the building is superior to what was previously used as a pig confinement unit. The audit team for both Nyman Ranch and Chipotle thought it was exceptional in terms of air. Capping two-thirds of the pit was the main factor improvement and the atmosphere is a lot more pleasant now. Any questions? Um, the, I know this may sound different, but the, the same concept that I, when I built this building, it was designed as a nursery growing unit. So you took the pigs to a stage so that when you took them and put them outside pens, they take off and go. And that's kind of what I wanted to complete within my Nyman Ranch system, so I wasn't putting a 35, 40 pound pig outside, you know, to eat outside and then could sleep inside with straw but get them to a little bit bigger weight so they just take off. And that's kind of what they did, have done, at least for me at this point. Did not, okay, the question is, is there any reason I did not cement the hall area? The reason I didn't cement the hall area was, is sort of in my head, I wanted to make use of the pit, catch some of the water from where the pigs, uh, when they slop, so I'd catch that, uh, and also have some of the benefit of the, of the manure going into the pit. So I didn't have quite so much manure to move. So that was, that was the reason for doing that. So my straw bedding will, and that will vary with the pigs, but I, I usually clean one, between one and three weeks, depending upon their size. Whenever I feel it needs so that it gets them stirred up, you know, getting a little bit smelly, get a little bit messy, built a little bit too high, uh, then I clean. How, how thick is it? Mm, it'll vary, sometimes like that. But I don't go much more, I can't go too much more than what you saw the depth of that, uh, of those riser steps. Because I don't want it to go into the, to the pit. They'll drag a little straw into there, but not. Yeah, I changed my pit fan so I could slow their speed down more and then when it gets warmer, it speeds up a little bit more. And then I'll go in there and flick it once in a while, depending on what the weather is like outside. You know, as the manure builds up, but if, you're, if you always keep covering the manure with straw, that's part of the trick, too. You know, a lot of people in units think, uh, let the pigs manure here and leave it alone. I, that same, I follow that same principle in my farrowing unit, cover the manure, cover it with straw stops the ammonia from building up. Confinement barn? Yes, it is a confinement barn. That's correct. Completely closed. How warm do you keep it? Well, I started out at 60, 65, and I dropped her, I'm dropping it down. I got it down about 50. I think I can drop her down further. To save on heat, Bill. That's the way it looks to me. They, they'll come in there about 35, 40 pounds and leave there about 75 pounds. And they, uh, the, the one piece that I have to do is if, if they do stay a little bit longer, I have, to, I have to, you know, sometimes what I'll do is take out half the pigs and leave the other half there, depending on what my pen situation is outside, my flow. Because with Nyman Ranch standards, you have to have so many, you, you can't exceed so many pigs per square feet, depending on size. But it's also a little bit of common sense standards too. Because if you, if you have too many pigs in too small of an area, tail batting comes. So, and we, we've had no problem with that in this building. What we have for outside is I have uh, 
buildings that are not insulated. Uh, well, they're in, I should say, I should correct that. They're insulated, but not heated. And we use straw in them. And then uh, the pigs go outside to eat.